Maya I'm Claire Smith and welcome to my channel. So today I'm going to be talking about my top 10 spring fragrances but I'm going to put a bit of a twist on this because a lot of these are associated with stories or with characters or other things associated with spring. So I'm going to talk about the gods, about the myths that are all behind what I think of when I use these fragrances. So if you haven't seen me before, I'm Claire Smith. I make videos all about perfume, perfume science, perfume history, perfume psychology. And I also just do some straight perfume reviews and also fun perfume tags. So if you are interested and you haven't already done so, then please do consider subscribing. And also please like this video if you do like this kind of content. So the first fragrance is one from Reminiscence and this is Heliotrope from the Les Nautes Gourmand line. And this fragrance just makes me think of Alice in Wonderland and Easter. This fragrance I would describe actually as Alice in Wonderland going on an Easter egg hunt. This fragrance is a really milky green almond smelling fragrance with some fig in the opening, but it quickly turns into sort of a more cakey vanilla, a slightly spiced cakey vanilla, but with a really smooth marzipan, really almondy, really rich kind of fragrance. I guess this fragrance just sort of rep represents overindulgence really, and I think that's what Alice in Wonderland is partially about, isn't it? A lot of that book is about her having to eat things or drink things in order to get bigger or smaller or to join in to, you know, engage with people, having tea parties and things. And this fragrance really makes me think of those kinds of whimsical Alice in Wonderland kind of situations. I think if you want to smell edible and delicious for Easter, this is definitely the fragrance to choose. So that's Heliotrope by Reminiscence. So my second choice is one from Dior, and this is a fragrance that I don't wear that often. So this is J'adore. So I've had this bottle about 10 years, and you can see how little I've used of this bottle. And the reason for that is because I don't think it really suits me. And I've not reached this for a few years now, but I think I'm ready to retry it because I've spelt it on other people recently. And the trail, I really love the smell of this on other people. So this is a fruity floral fragrance and the florals are primarily jasmine, but also some lily of the valley. And this fragrance just smells kind of golden, much like the colour of this bottle really. And it always makes me think of the myth that is associated with the lily of the valley. So lily of the valley is said to have been born from the tears that Eve dropped as she was expelled from the Garden of Eden when she'd eaten the fruit, the forbidden fruit. So this fragrance really makes me think of that whole story, really, because it has that lily of the valley. It has those fruits in it, which could represent the forbidden fruits. But it also has jasmine, which could represent the temptation of the, of the viper, of the snake, telling Eve to, to go and try these fruits. So that's my second choice, Shador by Dior. So my third choice for spring is a lilac fragrance. I absolutely love lilacs, I love hyacinths, I love uh, wisteria, all those kind of purple spring florals are just very me. And they're so rare in fragrance and it's so lovely to smell a fragrance with those notes in. And I love going for a walk around my local area and there's a particular lilac bush that I have to kind of almost crawl under to get down a path. And I absolutely love that part of my walk because it's so so intoxicating that smell when that lilac bush is in full flower and the fragrance I'm choosing for lilac is Drop to Issy by Issy Miyake. So this fragrance is a lilac fragrance primarily but also it's an almond milky kind of fragrance that makes it almost like a body cream and I would say that this fragrance really makes me think of Nivea body creams actually. It makes me think most of the rose one because there is rose in this fragrance. Yeah it's like in a pump bottle. I'll put a picture up. But yeah, this fragrance makes me think of the story of Syringa. So Syringa was a nymph and she was being chased by the god Pan. And she didn't want Pan to, to catch her because Pan was madly in love with her and was going to have his wicked way with her. So she changed herself into a lilac bush. But also Syringa is the Latin name for lilac. And that's what I think of with this fragrance. So that's my third choice for spring, Issey Miyake's Dropped Issey. So my next choices really hinge around violets and violets for some reason for me are just completely associated with fairies. I guess it's the sweetness, the sweetness and the powderiness and the innocence that violets kind of bring. They're sort of playful, aren't they, as a flower and magical feeling almost. So can you have a spring fragrance video without putting insolence in it? I don't think you can. So this is Galan's insolence. Insolence is something that I only really reach for in spring and it's something you really don't need very much of. It's so, so strong, this fragrance. And it's something that is just overtly fruity, even though I don't think there's any fruits in here. It definitely has a fruitiness about it. 
but really it's it's mainly a palmer violet fragrance isn't it it's a palmer violet powdery sweet floral fragrance i think insolence is one of those fragrances that i can't really work out because it smells kind of vintage but it just has a really young joyful feel about it it's it's just a very interesting contrast this fragrance and i think it's absolutely perfect for spring so that's my fourth choice insolence by galan with the next fragrance, I'm sticking with violets. And the reason I'm sticking with violets is because in my 50 fragrances in one sentence video, I describe this fragrance as what the bad fairies wear. And this is definitely what the bad fairies wear because it starts off so innocent and sweet and it just goes into this dark, musky dry down. So this is Lolita Lempica by Lolita Lempica. And this is the original formulation of this fragrance. But I think, you know, they've relaunched this fragrance in a, fr in a formulation that's more similar to this original formulation so you could go out and buy that one if you wanted to try it this one though is particularly magical to me and it's just something that i think it's the combination of the notes here it's super sweet almost with that cherry lolly feel at the beginning it's like a like a cherry sweet but it also has some anise it has some licorice uh, and that sort of adds the sweetness but also it has violet and the violet is powdery and sweet here but as this dries down, it becomes muskier and dark and it begins to smell less innocent. I think this is a very sort of two sides kind of fragrance. It's something that isn't what it seems. It's very much like an enchanted forest kind of fragrance, I guess. So that's Lolita Lempica by Lolita Lempica. So the next fragrance I'm going to pick because I want a fragrance for Narcissus. And this is probably the only fragrance with Narcissus in my collection. This is Tom Ford's Velvet Orchid, and this is really one of the few fragrances that I can distinctively smell bulb flowers in. But really, this is probably the easier fragrance to love out of the two fragrances of Velvet Orchid and Black Orchid for most people. This one is definitely more spring appropriate, though. I would say that Black Orchid is more like autumn, winter. So this one, I think, just has that really sort of nectary, sweet, floral feel, and it's because of the sugary honey in this fragrance, but also the rum. It just feels very sort of like you're a drunken bee almost going from bold flower to bold flower when you smell this. So this fragrance always makes me think of the story of Narcissus. So if you don't know the story of Narcissus, he was out hunting one day. So the myth, myth goes and he happened to want a drink. So he went to this, this pool of water and he dipped his hands in and then looked at his own reflection. And he didn't really realise what a reflection was. And he saw himself and he fell in love with his own reflection. And so when he was reaching out with his hand clearly he touched the water and the reflection went and then he had to wait for the ripples to go and so he spent his lifetime pining away trying to reach out to touch his own reflection in this pool of water he didn't eat he didn't sleep and he wastes away and when his body has wasted away what's left at the end is a narcissus flower and narcissus is supposed to represent narcissus is death basically and that's what I always think of with daffodils, what I think of with this fragrance. But I actually also really just love this painting of Narcissus as well. I think it's one of my favourite paintings. It's by the Pre-Raphaelite artist Waterhouse, who is also just one of my favourites along with Millet. So that's Tom Ford's Velvet Orchid. So the next fragrance I'm choosing for the Phoenician goddess Astarte, who is the goddess of sexual love and desire and also of fertility. So this fragrance was originally called Astarte and it's by Mabel Rama. She's now calling it Forbidden Fruit and I totally get that. So this fragrance really makes me think of gods sitting at a table laden with fruits and flowers and the fruits are kind of overripe and you're just producing juice and they're all sticky and they're eating them in a very vor voracious way and the juices are all kind of tumbling down their chests and they're all sticky and and they're they're about to go out and you know do what they do with mortals have the wicked ways with them and they're just sort of overindulging before they do that so this fragrance is fruity to begin with as might be expected from that story so it's very orange feeling or even dark yellow feeling it's tropical fruits but it's also sparkly fruits there's pear here for sure and it's also got these yellow florals that then turn into whiter florals by the end of the fragrance Really in the dry down, there's a bit of a greenness to it, just cutting through all those florals and those fruits, but also a really nice dark muskiness. It's a very sort of elixir feeling kind of fragrance, really, like a love potion, this fragrance, summer love, love potion. I think this fragrance is just very distinctive and it's very, very long lasting. And I think for the, a second fragrance from a perfumer, it's just an amazing one. So that's Forbidden Bloom by Mabel Arama. 
So the next fragrance is one from Karen Timpson and this one's Moon Palace. So the idea of this fragrance is that it's a mystical palace filled with flowers at night. And I really get that from this fragrance. Very, very deeply floral. If you're not good with indolic florals, I would not go for this fragrance, but it's only very lightly indolic. It's nothing too much, I don't think. So this is bright yellow floral, so lang lang, and also definitely tuberose, putting some jasmine. But it's also rich and warm and it dries down to a kind of resinous musk. It's really one that just keeps you sniffing this one. I think all three of those florals, so the jasmine, the tuberose and also the ylang ylang are thought of as something that could be an aphrodisiac. And I guess that's because they're slightly indolic and that's what makes them seen by most people as something that can be an aphrodisiac. This fragrance really makes me think of the Philippine myth of ylang ylang. So ylang ylang was an innocent, chaste girl who was so beautiful that many people fell in love with her but she was sworn to, to never be touched by a man and eventually what happened was that some man reached out and tried to touch her and she turned herself into a flower in order to avoid him touching her because she was so chaste and that's how ylang ylang is supposed to have come about and that's what this fragrance makes me think about so this is my choice for ylang ylang moon palace so the next fragrance I'm choosing because it's a rose fragrance and it always makes me think of a certain story. So this fragrance is Pearl de la Lique by la Lique. So this is a very effervescent, almost fizzy rose fragrance. And I think that's because of the pepper in this. And it's also got some woody patchouli in the dry down. But this is a really sort of fresh red rose kind of fragrance, I think. Also, this is really long lasting. It's really good value as well. La Lique fragrances, I'm always amazed by the quality for the price point. Also, this one is just really refreshing and I think it's really perfect for spring. So I'm, why am I choosing this one? Well, I'm choosing this because of the rose and the rose always makes me think of romantic love because roses really just are associated with romantic love, aren't they? And why are they associated with romantic love? It's because of the original story linking them to love, which was the story of Aphrodite. So Aphrodite was a goddess and she was madly in love with a mortal called Adonis. So Aphrodite one day heard that somebody was planning to murder Adonis and she felt panicked and felt like she had to go warn him. And that's what this fragrance always makes me think of. It makes me think of the panic because of the effervescent fizzy feel. But also it makes me think of the rest of the story because of the rose. So Aphrodite ended up running to try to warn Adonis. And while she was running, she ran through rose bushes and the rose bushes tore her ankles and made her bleed and her blood dropped on these white roses and made them red through her love and that's what this fragrance really makes me think of that that love and that panic and that story so that's Pearl de la Lique by la Lique. so the final fragrance I'm choosing is Theodorus Calatinus Alluring Fig so this fragrance is a very green smelling fig fragrance it's a, more of a fig leaf than a fig fruit but it is a little bit milky still and it also has a very green feeling vanilla with it. And I just think of this fragrance as a very spring appropriate fragrance. It's just too much in summer sometimes. It's too creamy, it's too sweet, and it can become cloying in hotter weather. But I think in even the warmer spring, this is absolutely delicious. So this fragrance I'm choosing because figs are intimately associated with knowledge and wisdom, and they're always associated with the gods. So in Hinduism, the god of the gods, Vishnu, has been depicted sometimes as a fig tree. Also in Buddhism, Buddha received enlightenment under a fig tree. And in other traditions, Adam and Eve wore fig leaves when they'd eaten fruit from the tree of knowledge. So I think fig just has a lot of different associations and this fragrance is absolutely perfect for spring. So that's my final choice for spring, Alluring Fig by Theodorus Calatinus. So that's the final fragrance in this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have enjoyed it, then please press the like button and please also consider subscribing if you haven't done already. And please let me know what you think of some of these fragrances, if you've tried them. And also, if you know of any other spring fragrances that you could associate with myths or even just some general spring recommendations for new fragrances, I'd be really interested to know what you're wearing this spring. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Mm -hmm.